Hi YouTube and happy Thursday. It is a chilly, windy, rainy evening here in Montgomery County, Maryland. A truly dreary night. Which means it's not a good time to do a bike ride, but it is a good time for my cat to sit on me and use me as a heat source. And for me to do another retro tech demonstration for you all. In this video, I will be celebrating 256 and more YouTube videos by using a $30 replica of an early microcomputer that not only fits in your pocket but runs years on a single bun cell battery to add two unsigned 8 bit numbers with carry. The inspiration for this video came from the channel Alone in, Alone in the Kitchen with Nino Ivanov. Nino is a, fr a good friend of mine and he has a truly amazing channel where he does all kinds of um, hacks of, of new and old computers and really he creates programs to solve problems from the simplest literal and figurative building blocks plus first principles. It's truly an inspirational channel. I really enjoy watching his videos. I highly recommend you subscribe. I will be listing that channel in the description of this video, and I highly recommend you go and, and, and take a look. So Nino and I had, had talked, uh, talked in YouTube about our different videos. And I think at one point he mentioned one of my videos was the, my uh, 256th. So from that, I decided to create some video to celebrate. And I thought, what better way to celebrate 256 videos and 8-bit computers than to add two numbers less than 256? How else would I have celebrated? I might do that on the digital 2U. Let me just talk a little bit more about that. It is a very, very nice handheld Retro computer, early retro, or sorry, not retro computer, early microcomputer replica developed by Brad Slattery in Australia. I've done videos on this in the very distant past. There's also some excellent tutorials and demo videos you can find on YouTube from, from Brad uh, 00, Retro Brad 00. And this thing is, is, is just incredible. It It's a ruler-sized computer that, as I mentioned, will run years on a single CR2032 bun cell battery, and it's all based around a single PIC microcontroller. You enter in addresses or data on these button switches on the left side, and then you can run and stop programs, advance to different positions in memory, and store data with these buttons in the program section, or even load files through the USB-C port this is truly Y2, Y3, Y4K compliant on the right side. There's a pretty funny ad that Brad had done uh, that was a spoof of the Commodore 64. Are you keeping up with the Commodore ads? And, you know, I don't know if I can keep up with this now that it has USB-C. I don't know if Apple can. little zinger dropped in there. So anyway, I'll go ahead and uh, zoom in. For those who haven't seen it before, just to show you what the digital 2U looks like. Mine is in a nice PETG 3D printed case. It's a little hard for me to remove, but if I uh, very gently use a uh, jeweler's screwdriver, I can pull it out. I'll see if I can pull it out here here for you, but I, I think I'll uh, need you know, a little bit of help. Um, I, I was hoping to pull it out because on the back there's a summary of the different commands, but... Anyway, I won't need to go through that for this video. I went through several different tries. I, I tried and failed until eventually I came up with a nice, elegant solution for adding two 8-bit unsigned numbers with carry. I'll just show you on this first printed page. These are printed in letter format, not A4. That's just my disclosure to the um, Canon driver Canon printer driver on my computer for you all to hear. On this second piece of paper, I have the third try. Ironically enough, it was the third one that the the third try that was was the charm, as the cliche goes. 
Now I'll go ahead and zoom in there. I have both the assembly listing and the uh, machine code. I assembled this by hand just by going through the command reference. But in a future video, I might use this as a demonstration of the really nice assembler, emulator, and I think even like a spreadsheet assembler that's, that Brad has uh, provided online to support digital to you users. So my third try, as you can see in this document, I, I set up the program. So first you sort the two 8-bit unsigned numbers that you add in OX in OX70 and OX71 hexadecimal memory locations and then expect the output in the next two bytes after that OX72 and OX73. I make sure to clear the output before each sum because you might imagine you know you run this program many different times to add different numbers like John Malkovich getting excited and having a seizure in the SNL clip where he's so excited about getting a calculator for Christmas. So to clear those those two bytes where the sum is stored, I use copy LR, copy literal to RAM 0, 0 to OX72 to again initialize that that location in RAM, copy LR literal to RAM 0, 0 uh, my come on shangle that's uh, not a place for you to, to uh, clean yourself. Copy literal 00, 0 to 0x73 0 and then copy literal to accumulator 00. That just copies 00, 0 into the accumulator register and I realized I had to do this after I was getting some nonsensical sums when I tried running this program again and again. After that I have add RAM to accumulator OX70, that first input 8-bit number, and then add RAM to accumulator OX71, that takes the byte at OX71 and copies it to the accumulator. And then I add the least significant byte to, to OX73 using copy accumulator to RAM, and I pop out the carry bit into the most significant byte and you know there's not necessarily a carry that you know if the sum isn't going isn't going over 255 using shift right or shift uh, ram left through carry ox72 it's kind of funny you know to see the carry bit you know pop seemingly out of nowhere it's like the uh, the was it the not so polite joke of pulling an idea out of your butt. Maybe sometimes you poop out a carry bit and you want to see that. Anyway, uh, gross jokes aside, uh, what I do afterwards is inspect RAM at OX72 and OX73. And then right below this, I have the machine code bytes and addresses of where to enter in the code. the code and, and where to enter it, sorry. And I'll just go through these examples and I'll keep, my cat really wants to be on YouTube, walking back and forth through the camera view. Oh, the, the minutes before when she was sitting in my lap, how I long for them. Okay, so I'll go ahead and, and turn on my uh, digital to you. And we're in stop mode right now, so I can go ahead and enter in these bytes. So the first byte is 0, 5. There's a 4 and 1 there. Just as a side note, I really love how using this forces me to use my head to convert between binary, decimal, and hexadecimal. I think that alone is a nice brain building exercise. So with that said, I'll go ahead and enter in 0, 5 at address 0, 0 and then press store. And now we can see the program counter advance to 0, 1. I'll put in 0, 0, and then store, and then for 0, 2, I'll put 7, 2, and then press store, and now we're at 0, 3. You can see the address in my machine code listing. Oh, well, my cat's enjoying this too much. Hey, she's keeping it real. That's what I'll say. Uh, I'll go ahead, add 0, 3, 
0, 0 at 0, 4. Now at 0, 5, I'll enter in 73. There we go, 2 and 1, 4, 2 and 1, store. Now we are at 0, 6, so I need 0, 4, and store. And now 0, 0 at 0, 7, store. Now we're at 0, 8, so I have 1 and 2, store. Now 7, 0, store. Now, um, oh man, my cat's... Uh, is my cat's too much of a CS uh, bachelor student right now. Okay, so where was I? I am at uh, 8 and 2, that's 0A, so I wanted to enter in 1, 2. Uh, and then I need to enter in 7, 1, and store. And then 0, 7. I... When I was entering in, I kept having to force myself to put the 7 over in the least significant byte as opposed to most significant, just from all those seven zeros and seven ones. Anyway, that's just a mental bias that I challenge. Uh, zero, 07, now 73. It's a lot easier to program this than something like a Cosmac Elf. I have a video of, of mine um, in the past where you know, I was flipping those rocker switches back and forth. It's a lot easier on the fingers. Okay, so now we're at 0E, which means I need uh, 2, 1, instead of 1, 2. 2, 1, store, and then 7, 2. Okay, so I'll go ahead and now go to 0, 0, and then make sure I entered everything correctly. So it's zero, I have 0, 5, 0, 5, 0, 0, 7, 2, 0, 5, 0, 0, 7, 3, 0, 4, 0, 0, 1, 2, 7, 0, 1, 2, 7, 1, 0, 7, 7, 3, 2, 1, 7, 2. Wow, I sound like I'm calling out lottery numbers. But unlike that, we're really learning from this. Okay, so I'll go to zero, zero, and um, I actually will go to zero or seven, zero, and enter in my first number to add. I'll try FF and FF. There's seven, zero. Go to seven, zero. Let's store FF in there. 255. Store and then let's go ahead and store FF at 71. And now let's go to 00, zero and let's run our program. Let's first see what address at which we are. Looks like we are in address 11 here, which is uh, sort of interesting. And now I'm going to go to. Uh, our initial number, we see FF as input 1, FF as input 2, 1 as the most significant byte, and you can see there's carry there. You'd expect adding FF and FF will be more than 255, more than 256. You'd expect the output to be 1 FE. Is that correct? Let's go to the next byte. FE. We see 1 FE is the sum of FF and FF, 255 and 255, 200 and 200. I add those together, you get 400, 55 and 55, 110. So that would be 500 and 510. So indeed we see 510 is 1 FE in hexadecimal. Let's go ahead and try this again. With this time with oh zero f and zero f that should not have carry. I'll go ahead and store zero f there, store, and zero f here, store, and then go to zero, uh, program counter at the initial address, run and stop, and then go to zero seven zero zero, and we see ff or sorry, 0F, zero 0F, zero 
no carry as we expect. And indeed, we have our expected output of 1e. I've cleared all the output bytes and accumulators, so I haven't had problems with you know some strange, strange uh, sums coming up here. Is strange as an incorrect? Okay, so let's go ahead now and try FF and 01 because this is a 256th YouTube video celebration. I'll go ahead there. That was FF and 01. 255 plus 1, I would imagine, is 256. I'll store that there. I'll go to 0, 1, and then go to 0, 7, or sorry, 7, 0. Go to next, and there is carry. 0, 1, 0, 0. Beautiful. That is 256. And just with those few examples, I've shown you a very simple machine, machine language program that you can write on your digital to you. But wait, there's more. In a future video, I'll show you how you can assemble that, those, that um, assembly code, those assembly instructions I have up here into machine code with, I believe it's called ADR2. There's a few different assemblers, one that, that uh, Brad provided and another Excel spreadsheet that I think he also had provided. I'll show you how to use those on my Linux machine, and that will be helpful if you want to you know, develop more complex digital programs. One last thing I'll note is, much like your TI-59s and TI-57s of the 70s, you can't just feel entitled to keeping this program in RAM after you turn it off. This does not have continuous memory like you'd see on a TI-58C and HP-15C that I'm going to talk about in a near future video or a uh, TI-66. This does have EEPROM storage within the microcontroller and there's a way to save your program to a block of EEPROM storage, but I'm not going to go through that in this video. Just to make you aware if you have a digital to you that you don't have continuous memory but still, you can have you know a lot of fun writing up programs, uh, writing up programs, and then you know turning it off and and uh, writing you know a new program. And if you want to store it, there is the EEPROM there for that. I hope you enjoyed this video. I've been really excited to do this for quite a long time, so I'm happy to have um, solved that problem. I'd like to thank Nino again for inspiration. He's gone way further than I have. He has a has a video about multiplying 24-bit numbers on the digital to you and adding 24-bit numbers. I'll put post links to those videos in the description down below. If you have experiences with the digital to you or you really like this little microcomputer trainer, leave them in the comments down below. Please like and subscribe as always and thanks for watching. Have a great one.